Okay, uh, there has been a bit of a confusion in terms of the uh, title of the uh, workshop. <laughs> so um, initially when uh, I contacted uh, Costas at that time, uh, he put the preliminary title as data mining, but um, we, we, we think that the scope is more than just data mining, and it's more uh, uh, data-driven learning and travel. Uh, so at least uh, on the website, the, the, it was changed. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> we, 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 let's go with uh, uh, data-driven learning and travel. OK, so. <clears throat> Um, if if if, uh, if we look at the the the, the um, uh, schedule of the conference, we see that uh, in in this conference we have at least these topics that were covered uh, by uh, one way or, or the other uh, some some data driven approach. Just because of the fact that we have so much data now available, we are able to exploit the data to to um, uh, to uh, look into behavioral dimension of uh, of, of our uh, choice making in, in 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 travel, and also looking at activity patterns and and try to infer what's going on. And the kind of techniques that have been used. Uh, um, at least these four different classes you can see or category you can see you see that there are, there, there are artificial neural networks or some of some some advanced uh, uh, version of it uh, uh, a deep neural network co convolutional neural network or uh, restricted Boltzmann machines uh, and you see that at least there are you know at least there's one paper on it there are a couple of topics with two and three as well so in general, it seems that this area of research, it is growing upon us, at least. <laughs> so uh, now, um, the, 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 uh, Costas uh, gave us a very specific task in terms of what this workshop should be doing. So we, we, we kind of define that uh, in these uh, three uh, 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 bullets. So first one uh, was, what is the scope of data-driven learning in the context of travel behavior modeling? Uh, second one was, uh, what are the key gaps in the research? And the third one was to develop some projects uh, that ad can address these gaps. Uh, we decided that we will work on three different projects uh, and th that should build upon uh, uh, the, the research gaps. So what we did was that um, we kind of, uh, first day, we um, worked mostly on the first two um, uh, uh, bullets, which was the uh, scope of the um, uh, data-driven uh, learning. And the second, uh, we uh, worked on uh, developing um, or, or pointing out what are the research gaps that are involved. Then uh, in the second uh, uh, workshop uh, on, the, on July 18, we um, looked at uh, uh, formation of three groups, and we, we, we let those three groups decide themselves what, what they want in terms of uh, um, uh, the, the, the topic of uh, their project. And then they started working on it. Uh, later on, um, uh, Chandra uh, uh, invited us uh, for, for, for a, a discussion with, uh, uh, with uh, his workshop, and uh, that's where we, we had a very stimulating discussion for about an hour, uh, and uh, some, some, some good, good points came out of that as well. So that's us hard at work. Uh, Costas took a photo from the window uh, <laughs> while we were working. And uh, it was um, a pretty good participation as well. Um, our uh, four uh, note takers, they were incredible. Uh, just because of them, I'm able to present uh, what, we were, we, what we were discussing. So thanks a lot for them. So uh, let's quickly go into the three points that I just pointed out. So the first one that we looked at uh, was the scope of, um, uh, of data-driven learning uh, in terms of travel. Uh, so we, what we did was that we divided uh, this, these natural division of these algorithms, uh, which is a discriminative, discriminative approach, and uh, the second is a generative approach. Uh, discriminative approach, it, we, we, we looked at and saw that uh, it's good 
for uh, extract, uh, extraction and analysis of tra travel patterns, especially for um, things like purpose of trip, mode of transportation, uh, travel activity, a diary, uh, and uh, all sorts of details. And it, it helps us uh, classify uh, travelers as well. It has key advantages in terms of uh, use with, uh, for instance, uh, smartphone GPS data. Uh, and uh, it, we saw that uh, the scope of it is growing in this area. Um, at the same time, we saw that uh, uh, these, uh, these methods that are used currently, they, they, they use a very limited classification of, uh, uh, of, of, of um, uh, purpose and mode. Uh, and uh, uh, Kai was uh, with us, and Kai suggested that why don't we just drop the, this whole uh, classification and, and make it more in terms of time and space. So, a person is spending two hours in suburbs. You know, we don't need to know uh, what what exactly the person is uh, doing, but we need to know at what place and and uh, what's going on in that place. So we, we looked at these directions. Then uh, we, we we saw that these sort of models they are um, good at capturing uh, patterns, but then putting in uh, semantic meanings on them, that is our respons responsibility, and that's where uh, you know there, there's some some work that needs to be done. Uh, in terms of generative models, uh, we saw that uh, they are they are better for uh, uh, predictive modeling. Uh, they are better for exploring the distributions and correlations among variables. Uh, one key point that uh, that uh, uh, these kind of models uh, they do is that they don't assume any distributions over uh, uh, x or y, and they try to extract that distribution from the data itself. So, so that gives us a lot of flexibility in that direction. Uh, then, uh, uh, it, 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 as they are generative models, uh, they can generate data, so it helps us in dealing with uh, missing data or cases like population synthesis, and it also helps us in, in merging multiple uh, data sources as well. Um, their spatiotemporal transferability was dis discussed, uh, and um, uh, there was later on a uh, discussion about um, uh, accuracy versus, versus uh, transferability, uh, and um, uh, it, it, it seems that uh, in case of uh, data-driven approaches, especially generative models, uh, this is a bigger issue than uh, classic uh, approaches. Uh, then uh, the imbalance of data was discussed as well. If we have 90% um, of our trips uh, by, by car uh, and, and very few uh, other modes, uh, in those sort of cases, we see that uh, these, these uh, models are limiting. And there was another uh, example here about the uh, missing uh, data on elderly population and how uh, uh, they, that can be incorporated. Uh, in general, it was a consensus that um, these models are useful in, for di diagnostics and uh, then uh, can be used for, uh, uh, then they, their, their, their analysis can be used for uh, more detailed conventional models. Okay, so point, uh, the second point which comes to the research gaps that we discussed, uh, um, there's some research gaps that are listed here. Uh, so one of the key research gaps that is there is that when and how uh, to use these data-driven uh, techniques. Uh, and uh, they're, they're, even in uh, computer science uh, um, uh, uh, research area, there's a big discussion about that they are becoming, uh, this whole area is becoming like an alchemy and you know, uh, there's, a, there's a hit and trial, very, very black box sort of approach. So how can we avoid that, that sort of uh, uh, pitfall? Uh, in terms of uh, interpretation of the model, uh, uh, what can we do uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, how, how to inter interpret the model, what they can do and what, what they cannot do, and um, um, what is their best use? Uh, that, that needs to be looked at as well. Uh, incorporating dynamics uh, in data-driven models, that is, uh, that is a problem for computer science uh, uh, research uh, as well, so how to uh, uh, look at that in terms of travel, uh, use of them in forecasting, uh, and then uh, uh, taking advantage of the estimation techniques that are developed for these sort of approaches uh, for, for hypothesis-driven uh, uh, more conventional models. 
Uh, other uh, uh, gaps that we looked at was uh, exploring the uh, abstract re representation of travel purpose uh, and other uh, uh, um, dimensions that, that we infer from uh, uh, these data sets. Uh, then uh, a big discussion was on the uh, 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 concept of benchmark data set, uh, uh, data sets that we can use for um, uh, uh, evaluating uh, or comparing different models uh, in details um, and, and, and how, how to develop those, those uh, benchmark data sets. Um, using such techniques to capture unexplainable dimensions within um, hypothesis-driven modeling was also discussed. Um, given that we have so much data uh, on individual, uh, uh, on each individual for a very long time, uh, there's a big uh, uh, push towards uh, individual level model, individual specific model, uh, and, and, and within that context, uh, how does the privacy uh, play a role and, and how we can develop uh, privacy aware uh, um, model estimation processes. Another uh, point that was discussed was uh, incorporating uh, context aware variables, uh, for instance, spatial uh, data within these uh, data driven approaches. Uh, so these were, these were the key uh, uh, research uh, gaps that we, we talked about. Then uh, after that, we had three projects that, uh, that were uh, three, uh, selected by three different groups. Uh, we assigned uh, three different leads. The first lead was uh, uh, Virginie. She uh, is going to talk about uh, the, the project that uh, sh uh, they, uh, her team selected. Thank you. So first, because it's conference on behavioral modeling, I should apologize because I did not behave well because I first forgot to register for a workshop and then I changed workshop, so I'm sorry. Having said this, so I think the discussion we had in uh, our group was that we all agree that it should not be like uh, from uh, models or theory uh, driven approaches to uh, data-driven approaches, but that it should be more like something like hybrid and that we should not abandon like the discrete choice models to just do machine learning. So this was the um, starting point of the discussion. So, and the idea is that, of course, the success of machine learning is telling us something, is that there are things that they are doing well, but it doesn't mean that, the, that we should uh, not... Uh, that we should abandon uh, this great choice model. So based on this, we had this idea of uh, adding or creating new hybrid models that would try to combine um, the benefits of uh, both communities. So the general idea being like to try to increase their uh, accuracy or their predictability, but while uh, maintaining uh, interpretability or transferability, right? So one way we are discussing how we could do this is, for example, in the... Um, utility specification, we could see how we can add a component that would be estimated uh, by a machine learning or neural network uh, algorithm. But so the, the focus would be really to try to maintain transferability, but to increase the accuracy. We were also discussing um, to use more uh, machine learning good practice in terms of um, utility specification, because there are I think, a lot of things that we are doing as a trial and errors. And of course, the behavioral um, intuition is, uh, should remain important, but maybe we can uh, uh, borrow good practices from machine learning to help us to, to do smarter uh, or more data-driven um, decisions. And then another point I think we have been discussing is that it should not go only in one direction, so it should not be only that we're bringing machine learning uh, good practices into discrete choice models, but maybe also, machine learning can, uh, I'm sure, can benefit from uh, the strong theoretical foundation of these great choice models. So, for example, we could, um, a way we have been discussing is how we can uh, uh, use the strong assumption we have in um, choice models to guide the choice of a specific architecture in a neural network or, or things like this. So, that's what we did. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so the second project uh, that came out, uh, the lead was Kai Axhausen. Um, and unfortunately, he's uh, not uh, here anymore. He, uh, he left, uh, I think, in the morning or something. So I'll, I'll give you an update on, on the second project. Uh, so the second project that was about 
exploring uh, benchmark data sets for comparative analysis. And there was a big discussion on uh, what, is, what, sh uh, what, what should be the definition of this, this data set and how should it look like? Um, which decision variable should it look like, uh, sh uh, should explore, whether it should explore root choice or which is, you know, uh, has, has tons of uh, um, uh, different uh, choices available or should it look at uh, um, a location choice which has l l l relatively less uh, variables available or it should look at more choice where, you know, the, the, the choices are even smaller. Uh, um, so if we look at, uh, for instance, uh, uh, more choice, uh, the choices are smaller, um, so um, uh, classic uh, random utility-based uh, approaches, they, 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 they have a strong hand there, uh, but at the same time, uh, machine learning approaches, they, are, they have a strong hand at really large data, set, data sets with a lot of choices. So uh, what's the fair size that we should look at? Uh, and 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 we uh, we looked at different options, and we decided that having 20 to 30 uh, um, uh, choices uh, should be a, a reasonable compromise for 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 for, for such approaches. Um, should these data sets be for families of decisions, or should be very specific for e each type of decision? Uh, also, uh, balance within the data uh, in terms of uh, different choices. Uh, then we talked about uh, where should this data be coming from. Uh, there was a long discussion, and, and we, d we agreed upon that uh, they should be either coming from, uh, from two areas. Um, a representative a city could be Toronto or uh, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, and and, and the, the discussion that was driven by Kai Exhausen and reasoning was that um, uh, uh, such data sets are from uh, good, uh, very diverse sort of uh, locations. At the same time, uh, they, they, they have relatively good balance in terms of choices that are available there. Um, yeah, so uh, these, these were just two examples that we looked at. Then uh, discussion was about whether it should be a a day-long uh, data set or should be multiple uh, days data set. Um, we didn't come to any agreement on that. Similarly, we looked at the size of data set, um, also related transportation data uh, in terms of supply, in terms of uh, other choices that were available. Uh, we discussed the role of uh, uh, open data repositories, for instance, Kaggle. Uh, it has tons of transportation data. Uh, or use of synthetic data and what are the pros and cons of it, uh, and um, um, predictive power and what usage and what, what type of costs are involved within, uh, within this. So this was the second project. Number, numbering is not right. <laughs> so the third project, um, George, uh, George was um, uh, leading, and uh, he's going to explain what he did. Thank you. Hi everyone, so uh, we were discussing when we formed the group what, uh, what problem should we discuss and target and uh, obviously there's a lot of concern regarding privacy with all the data being collected nowadays from smartphones, uh, cameras, social media and uh, so on. It's not a secret that privacy is a major concern. So what, we can, what can we do in the context of travel behavior? We came up with a simple methodology uh, we can use, but uh, even if it's simple, I think uh, it has a lot of potential and it can be applied. Uh, so we can use uh, any data set we want and train different models with and without uh, filter privacy, privacy filters. First, we can train a model using the full data set and then train another model with different uh, privacy filters. And here we can, a lot of things uh, can be done. Uh, we can, uh, for example, ca classify people into different groups with different characteristics and train our model using, using these aggregates instead of personal uh, information. Or we can, for example, use generative models to uh, generate fake data using the original data and then train our model on this fake data we got. And next, we can compare the prediction accuracy and the efficiency of the models with and without uh, privacy filters and 
we can see uh, uh, what uh, information, how much information do we need in travel behavior context, and what are the semantic data needs and meaning do we really need. So that's it. Thank you. We are not done yet. <laughs> okay. So the um, um, uh, the last hour of the second uh, uh, presentation, uh, sorry, workshop. Um, uh, Chandra invited us uh, to 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 join uh, his workshop, and we we had a very uh, interesting and very very stimulating um, uh, interaction uh, with the time use and travel uh, workshop. Uh, so the. the uh, the, the joint discussion basically um, st uh, st focused on um, theory-driven or uh, hypothesis-driven and uh, data-driven approaches rather than or. So uh, the, the idea was that uh, both, both sides can learn uh, uh, um, f uh, from each other. Uh, Virginie pointed out that as well. Uh, in terms of... Uh, um, uh, the, the second statement um, I, uh, I borrowed from um, Baiba. Uh, she she mentioned that uh, large data sets can inspire new theories, and and, and we, we we believe that you know there there is definitely a possibility of that. Uh, we discussed uh, in detail the predictability versus transferability. Uh, we also looked at. Uh, uh, interpretive, interpretability and what's inside. Again, the, the analogy, analogy with, the, with the onion. Um, we looked at, uh, we discussed in details the Bayesian origin of machine learning. Uh, and um, uh, we also at least pointed out what problems are good, good to use this tool and what problems are not. Uh, well, at least we, we raised this question. Yeah. So uh, that's about it. <laughs> Thank you.